it, it goes to the point of conscience too, though, because we've talked about this, but we haven't talked about it for a while. So let's talk about it. Well, conscience Pre-modern. Will... Yes, exactly. Okay. Pre-modern definition of conscience is your sense of standing in relation to God and your neighbor. It's a relational okay. term. Post-modern, since the enlightenment, conscience is an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. It's Jiminy Cricket, your conscience. Let your conscience be your guide. Good versus One evil. is outside of yourself and mm -hmm. the other takes place entirely inside yourself. So when Dr. Luther, for example, talks about conscience, he means, what does God think of you? What does mm -hmm. your neighbor think of you? How's this going to affect versus, those relationships? Yeah. Yeah. How's it affect the relationship that you have with God and your neighbor versus in the modern world, post enlightenment, it's all going on internally inside each individual person, right? which we then talk... becomes, I become my own moral compass. That's literally the definition of autonomy, a self law. Right. Well, and this is why we uh, rebel against say the 10 commandments because we see it as as you know moral obligation in terms of uh, a legal mm -hmm. scheme you know of merit and and whatnot that's all western thought whereas you know what the scriptures give i would i would argue is like here's what here's what looks lovely within this relationship right it's a it's mm -hmm. a moral it's a moral standard of framework for the relationship between god and man and between you and your neighbor right and and it shows you what's good. Yeah, we rebel against it, and yes, we don't follow it. And it shows us that too. Of course, that's the chief use we would say. Right. Um, but it still shows you like this is, if you like, the Edenic life, you know, yeah. of of man with God and and with one another. You know, and what the things to strive for, the things to yeah. work for, you know, the things to fight for. Right. What you said, I think, is incredibly important. Probably one of the most important things that we've ever talked about on the podcast. <clears throat> excuse me. So for those of you listening, pay attention to this, that in the present tense, when we read the 10 commandments, we hear the law preached, we only think about ourself mm -hmm. and how this affects me personally. Pre-modern, what you would have heard was how does this affect my relationship to God yeah. and to my neighbor? So you're basically in the present tense asking, what's my relationship to myself? And therefore, what's my relationship to God versus pre-modern, which is, well, what does God think of me in relation to the law? What does my neighbor think of me in relation to the law? Mm -hmm. This is, like I said, probably one of the most important things that will be discussed on this show because it changes everything. It changes the nature of how you understand the law and the gospel mm -hmm. because then the gospel sets you free to do what? Well, it sets you free to be in a clearer, more sober relationship to yourself and your right. own personal morality versus for Luther, the gospel sets you free to be for God and for your neighbor. Right. It's entirely opposite of what the original intent of the law was given for. Right. And we talk about the will it's attached then to the will. Correct. We're enslaved or bound to the selfish will. Right. You know, that's what sin is, mm -hmm. you know, to not live, um, in, in faith toward God or love towards your neighbor. And, and that's what is, that's what the gospel does. It actually breaks that, that uh, enslavement and it, right. but it binds you in a different way, right? Rather right. than binding it, binding yourself, you know, bind, being bound to your sinful will, you're actually, that relationship to God and to your neighbor is restored, which is, which is a kind of slavery, right? We're a slave to the law of Christ. Right. Um, which is, I mean, it's a master and uh, a, what do you want to say? Apprentice relationship? I don't know. Well, think of it this way using this, again, same setup. So in Romans, Paul says that Jesus Christ is the termination of the law for all those who have faith. He is mm -hmm. the end of the law. In relation to God and in relation to your neighbor, Jesus is the termination of the law mm -hmm. because you are free to be for God and for your neighbor. You don't need the law because you are in relation to God and your neighbor. They will determine for you what is necessary. But Jesus can't be the termination of the law if you're in relationship to yourself because now you're cut loose from any sort of boundaries any sort of rule, any sort of order whatsoever. So you must have Jesus lead you back to a better understanding of the law, which will lead you to a better understanding of yourself. Right. Rather than it work the other uh, direction where the, the first principle is what is lovely for myself. And then that's what love for my neighbor is going to look like. Correct. Which, I mean, that's, it's how you could take the greatest commandment. I mean, you could read it that way, right? To say, yeah. you know, love your neighbor as yourself, meaning how do I want to love myself? Uh, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's true. I mean, that's not a, that's not a bad, you know, obviously it's straight out of the scripture. Um, but that's, it's, you're not listening. You're not listening to God and you're not listening to your neighbor. Right. 
uh, and you're presuming that your heart is always going to be oriented towards um, what's good for you, first and foremost, which isn't right. true, <laughs> and what's good for your neighbor, which you, you don't even know what it is because you don't want to listen to them. Because you're only wrapped up in yourself, mm -hmm. which leads right. us back to the beginning of the conversation about the day school conversation, which is you have no collective morality. You have no objective mor moral basis because you're all autonomous. You all believe you're autonomous selves. And therefore, when you do hear the law, whether it be civil law or the spiritual law, you hear the law in relation to yourself and you need that rule set to guide you in order to be a good person, a moral person versus hearing the law and being set free from the law by Jesus through faith so that you are now free to, to let the others say to you, this is what I need from you. This is right. how I need you to serve me. So rather than listen to the parent whose primary vocation is caretaker of the child, the person on the school board, for example, only hears that in relation to themselves and how this affects mm -hmm. themselves, not mm -hmm. the students, not the parents, not the church or the community as a whole, but themselves and as the individuals. Parent might be, the parent might be wrong and, and your Correct. role there may be to call them to repentance. Sure. Right. But I think, but I think that's the key because if we're talking secular school, this doesn't apply mm -hmm. at all. Um, but like in a Christian school or in, our, in my case, a Lutheran day school, mm -hmm. The, the only way that any of this works or makes any sense is if the school itself hasn't been decoupled from God's word. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, Which and then we do all, yeah. If <laughs> all things must be, be done under, you know, subjection to Christ. If, if right. it's not, right. you know, if the conversation with the parent is like, I'm the expert teacher and you right. are, you know, the stupid parent, well, it's right. never going to work. Mm -hmm. The parent's not going to listen to you if that's the position, right. the attitude you take. Mm -hmm. Right, Which is say, why I'm when here, I say yeah. pastorally, start from Jesus crucified for the sin of the world and work your way out from there, they mm -hmm. automatically default to law because they don't know what I'm talking about. And they have no idea how to start from Jesus crucified for the sin of the world. They only know how to start with the law as it relates to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. This is a topic that probably we're going to have to keep teasing out for a while. Yeah. Because I imagine